Michelangelo's Sistine Chapel frescoes are, of course, among the most studied paintings ever made. Over the years, hundreds of scholars have registered observations and floated interpretations involving their creation, their style, their subject matter, their liturgical relevances, and their possible meanings. Relatively few scholars have noted, though, that the frescoes stood above a chapel that was emphatically divided by a large marble and iron chancel screen. That screen was later removed, but its original position can be reconstructed thanks to archaeological evidence and several early prints of the chapel. Moreover, that screen was important, as it marked a firm divide between the papal court and the laity, and firmly prevented the latter group from entering the presbytery. Of course, lay visitors could follow the liturgical action in the chapel's eastern end by peering through the chancel's great grates, and they could see Michelangelo's easternmost frescoes from a distance. But such views were never quite direct or unimpeded as a result of the barrier. That fact seems worth noting in a chapel that was dedicated to the Assumption, that is, to the passage of Mary from earth to heaven. Indeed, Michelangelo's frescoes also seem to have been conceived with a graceful flow in mind, as we follow his nine central images from liturgical west to east or pictorial top to bottom, we see the figures grow increasingly powerful and liberated. The subject matter also grows increasingly ethereal or openly divine. After all, God appears in each of the five easternmost frescoes, but in none of the first four, or, to put it differently, in none of those that stand over the lay section of the chapel. In other words, those members of the laity who were restricted to the outer church were granted only oblique views of the divine. Such an aspect may seem arbitrary or coincidental, but in fact the theme of man's distance from God was a common one in Renaissance theology and oratory, and it was often explained in terms of our corporeal nature, that is, our basic human tendency to sin. One thinks, for instance, of the prophet Isaiah, whom Michelangelo pictured just outside the screen, and who wrote in Isaiah 59 too, that your iniquities have been barriers between you and your God, and your sins have hidden his face from you. That theme was then developed by Italian Renaissance writers as, uh, such as Egidio da Viterbo and Marsilio Ficino, both of whom played important roles in the creation of Renaissance Neoplatonism. Ficino, for instance, once argued that the human mind could hardly comprehend the divine essence in its entirety. Thus, he wrote, we must suppose that the mind looks up at God but does not entirely comprehend him. Michelangelo, in turn, knew the writings of Ficino, and such an idea is paralleled in the painter's own writing at points. In one of his poems, for instance, Michelangelo complained that sick eyes can't move from earthly to divine, but are bogged down here forever. The specific language then could vary, but it's clear that a number of Renaissance thinkers, including Michelangelo himself, thought of bodies as obviating a direct experience of the divine. The marble screen made that idea literal and concrete. Standing below an image of man's first sin, lay viewers could look towards God, but always at a distance, and thus were reminded of their ancestors' banishment from Eden. <laughs>